we're going to go start it again. <laughs> today is 22nd of February, 2024. Okay, today's hearing is not going to be too long, probably just 40 minutes, and then we got 20, uh, 15 minutes uh, question time. Okay. First of all, um, let me clarify that this isn't academic research speech. It's just a introduction to some like a background knowledge and the theoretic basics of traditional Chinese medicine acupuncture courses. My main focus is on how we can apply this theoretical knowledge in our clinical practice, guiding our diagnosis and treatment. In order to achieve this, it makes today's discussion particularly important. So the relationship between yin yang and uh, pathogenesis, exploring the concept and the application in clinical, clinical practice. Actually, this is quite a comprehensive topic. Today's discussion can be considered as the first part. In fact, today's sharing was initially designed specifically for my friend, Dr. David Ryan. Seeing him start studying traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture formally, he had many confusions and uh, troubles and doubts, and was frustrated by the lack of answers. I didn't want to see him waste too much time or go down too many wrong paths. So I said, okay, let me share my understanding of traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture with you. Hopefully it will be helpful. I'm glad to see that today so many friends join us today to learn together. So when we talk about TCN, we always come back to the concept of yin yang and the, the five elements. Even though yin yang and the five elements have been talking about countless times, many of us still struggle to understand what they really mean and how they can help us. So many people complete three years of acupuncture course or other TCM courses, even graduate with excellent grades. But when they start practicing in the clinic, and uh, actually treating uh, patients, their understanding of the yin yang and the five elements remains vague, let alone effectively guiding diagnosis and the treatment using this concept. Some people use post diagnosis or tongue diagnosis to diagnose patients. When they use the theory of Yin Yang and the, the five elements to analyze and make judgments. Sometimes they may feel incredibly amazed and impressed by the results, marveling at the greatness of TCN. However, most of the time they find it difficult to explain many problems, rely on false interpretations, which leads to confusions and contradictions. Worse still, even after racking their brains, they can't figure out what went wrong. Why do we need to keep repeating the concept of the yin yang even after it has been talked about a cancerous time? Because it's just that important. We can almost say that the depths of your understanding of the concept of yin yang directly affect your level of proficiency in TCN or acupuncture in the future. I once conducted a lecture on uh, yin yang, attempting to bring like uh, everyone a fresh understanding of, from the three-dimensional or multi-dimensional perspective. Those are included in the slides from the previous presentations. Um, providing a refresher on what we discussed that time. Our understanding of yin yang in the 3D world is similar to a, we call it a dual torus. 
as you can see from here. Of course, we're not going to go through all these um, slides, but you can have some idea what we talked about last time. Our understanding of yin yang, not just uh, from the outside world, also yin yang exists and functions in the human body in a three dimensional form. If anyone wishes to watch this presentation again, I will upload it to our like uh, YouTube channel. You can check it out later. For the future acupuncture course, I mainly want to help you understand what yin yang is from a more clinical orient oriented perspective. There is a very interesting phenomenon. When you talk about yin yang with someone who speaks Chinese and with someone who speaks English, most of the time you get two completely different kind of feedback. Even if the, the person speaking Chinese isn't involved in the tra traditional Chinese medicine or doesn't have any like, deep understanding of Chinese culture, their understanding of yin yang, in a sense, might be deeper than that of the English speaker, even if the English speaker has studied yin yang theory for a long time. Why does this phenomenon occur? So let's set this uh, question aside for now and I discuss a few other questions first. So when did Western society truly begin to encounter the concept of yin and yang? How did Western society initially understand yin yang? Before we explore these questions, let me tell you a little story. In the 17th century, about 350 years ago, a man named uh, Joachim Boué was born in La Banne, France. He joined the Jesuit at the age of 22 and later become, became a French missionary in uh, 1684 at the age of 28. He was dispatched to China to spread Christianity by King Louis XIV. And was given the title Royal uh, Mathematician before departing. Upon arriving in China, he was recommended to the Qing Emperor Kangxi. Uh, this is Kangxi. The Kangxi Emperor of the Qing Dynasty, he was very interested in Western science, especially mathematics and uh, geometry. So at this time, the Joaquin Bowei had already adopted a Chinese name called Bai Jing. Bai Jing began teaching the Kangxi Emperor Euclidean geometry and uh, advanced astronomy from Europe. He gained the favor from the uh, Kangxi Emperor and was appointed to a government position. So later, the Kangxi Emperor tasked him with uh, leading astronomers and uh, ge geographers from China and Europe to travel throughout China for a decade, creating a national map called uh, this complete geographical map of emperor, or Qing emperor, which was not only a great achievement in that time, but it's still remarkable today. During like President Xi Jinping's visit to Germany in 2014, the Chancellor of Germany at the time, 
Angela Merkel, specially presented him with the replica of the map as a gift. So due to the Kangxi Emperor's extreme trust and reliance on Bai Jing, Bai Jing was able to enter the royal private library to read. Here, many knowledge and the materials that were lost in the fork or exclusive to the royal family was preserved, including a lot of secret content about the Book of Change or Yi Jing. For example, this image of 64 hexagram of a primordial figure, which Bai Jing obtained from the Imperial Library. It wasn't until the early 18th century that Bai Jing brought this image back to France and gave it to the Gofrit Libanese. Gofrit Libanese then make it public. Only then did the world learn about the existence of this image. And the Chinese researchers of Book of Change, Yi Jing, can finally see it. Before this, only the very few members of the royal, uh, Qing royal family had access to this knowledge. Gofrit Libanese, often hailed as the astrador of the 17th century, was a great mathematician and a philosopher in Western society. He was deeply immersed in the study of a binary at the time. Upon perceiving this image, he was greatly inspired and thoroughly grasped his research on binary. So in 1703, he published a highly significant paper on binary arithmetic. The paper was, uh, titled, was titled Explanation of a Binary Arithmetic, which uses only the character 0 and 1 with remarks on its usefulness and on what it gives the meaning of Asian Chinese figures of Wu Xi. It was this research on the binary that directly laid the foundation for the development of the later computer languages. One could even say that without this research and the contribution to the binary, we wouldn't have the electronic and the digital age we live in today. Because he introduced the 64, a hexagram of the primordial figures from the Book of Change to the mainstream Western science. Over the past 300 years, he has triggered a vast amount of scientists and scholars to explore the Book of Changes or Yi Jing intensively using various mathematic methods. It is important to know that this scientist or scholars approach the Book of Changes or Yi Jing from the mathematical standpoint to unearth its value in mathematics and science. So therefore, almost all of the books, as you can see from here, on the books of changes in the Western literature, to a greater or less extent, are oriented towards this uh, direction, scientific direction. It seems that like everyone is trying to uncover the rationality of the book of changes, Yi Jing, in the field of mathematics and science. This trend undoubtedly influenced the study and applications of the book of changes, Yi Jing, in traditional Chinese medicine. Of course, Modern Western research on the Book of Changes, Yi Jing, is no longer limited to this, to this uh, scientific point nowadays. People are increasingly realizing that the Book of Changes, Yi Jing, is not just about mathematics. 
That's just the tip of the iceberg. However, old ways of thinking have persisted for hundreds of years, making it very difficult for complete change to occur. Having said all that, why do we discuss the books of changes? We know that yin and yang at the root of Chinese culture and the, and the traditional Chinese medicine, and the book of changes or yi jing is what we currently know as the starting point for discussing yin yang. It's because of the yin yang that we have the eight trigrams, the five elements, and subsequently the 64 hexagram and all things in the world. The Book of Changes, or Yi Jing, is the ancient Chinese people's understanding and the views of laws of the universe and the development of all things in the world, as well as the practical guide to these laws. And the Yin Yang are the most fundamental theoretical basis in the Book of Changes, Yi Jing. It's like binary to the digital technology. Without binary, there will be no network words or visual existence today. Since the Western world's understanding of the Book of Change, Yi Jing, and the study of Yin Yang seems very one-sided and superficial, a comprehensive understanding of the Book of Change's interpretation of the Yin Yang requires in-depth research of course, which is not the focus of our discussion today. With that in mind, it's easy to understand why some of friends who practice Tai Chi or Chinese martial art find that the theoretical knowledge in relevant books doesn't provide much help in their Tai Chi practice or Qigong exercises. Through the above introduction to the historical origin of the book of changes, Yi Jing, in the Western world, we can also understand why most of books on the book of changes, apart from scientific and uh, numer numerical research, appear the fragment and confusing in other aspects, such as the interaction and the relationship Nature, nature and the living being, the principle of the energy, the rules of constructing society or kingdom. But today I want to share with you some common understanding of the Book of Changes, Yi Jing, and the Yin Yang theory over the past few hundred years, even the past one or two thousand years. For example, where did Asian people get the concept of, of yin yang from. Now, how did they embody yin and yang? The yin yang symbol, which has been passed down for thousands of years, or more commonly known as Tai Chi symbol, I would say definitely wasn't carved by someone casually in the cave. So, why is this Tai Chi diagram? so important because the yin yang or tai chi diagram is not only the symbol of traditional chinese medicine but also directly derived from the asian people's observation of the laws of the universe the philosophy of tai chi permeates the entire theoretical system of traditional chinese medicine so I've given the lecture before on the understanding yin yang from the three-dimensional perspective. Now, let's trace it back to its origin in the Books of Change and see what the Books of Change say. The Book of Change says, look here, look up at the stars to observe the universe and look down at the land to understand geography, therefore, 
you will know the mystery of light and darkness. He also says, harmonizing with heaven and earth, the book of change is able to embody the principle of heaven and earth. So here, we can see that the book of changes, the Yi Jing, is very clear. Its theoretical foundation comes from the observation of the universe and the understanding of the laws of the heavens and the earth. This seems to have no fundamental difference from the core concept of modern science. It's just that the method and the interpretation may vary, leading to different conclusions. Since the source of uh, the Book of Changes, the I Jing, and the principle of the Yin Yang stem from the observation of the universe, can we attempt to perceive Yin and Yang from the perspective of Asian people, viewing things through their eyes, and endeavor to understand the views, their views of the universe. For instance, so we can start with observing the sun, which is the biggest young we can observe. Thanks to our modern advanced uh, photography techniques, now we have uh, effectively documented the sun's path across the sky throughout the year. This first image shows the sun's path throughout the year captured in Greece, as you can see, 2001. And this is from the Turkey from 2005 and 2006, as you can see. The next image shows the period from 2003 to 2004 captured in Spain. So the last image is considered the first eight character sun path chart ever made, captured over New England in the United States from 1978 to 1979. This chart was all taken with the same roll of film at the same location by Denise D. E. Chico. Yes, I can't pronounce the name. No, this guy. So some people describe the sun path in the sky as resembling bowling pins, while others compare it to an elongated Tai Chi symbol. Given how the sun is observed in the sky, what about its projection on the ground? Will it also exhibit a distinctive path? The answer is certainly affirmative. But what kind of distinctive path would it be? So ancient Chinese used the Norman shadow method to draw the sun's path on the ground. This instrument used to record the sun's path is called Gui Biao. Now, the following image is the Gui Biao used for a timekeeping. After observing the sun throughout the year, what would happen if we connected the projection point at different times, just like in the sky? So what would happen? Would it also form an A character shape? Ah, oh, that's interesting. So after connecting the sun's projecting point, Asian people arrived at such a result. Based on this, they divided a year into 24 segments, as you can see from here, known as the 24 solo terms, which are still widely used today to guide agricultural activities in China and some Asian countries. Representing this result using the Bagua system, we get the outer circle as shown this. This is the Spagua system, the outside circle. Now that we've covered this point, so let's hold off on diving deeper for now. At this point, we've established one key idea. Asian scholars didn't isolate humans 
from nature when they study humanity. They considered the heaven, the earth, the universe, and then the mother nature together. This concept is crucial. So I encourage everyone to fully understand this. Of course, not only do the Chinese people have the fondness for the drawing Tai Chi symbols on the ground, but the British people have also had a long history of doing so. This is the Tai Chi crop circle discovered in the Somerset regions of England in uh, 2007. Okay, this is from Germany. This is from UK again in the 2009. This is 2009 again, UK. Again. So these Tai Chi symbols are drawn very delicately, as you can see. The question is, we don't know how they were drawn or what significance it represents. So, so once we understand the yin yang concept, let's take a look at how traditional traditional medicine views the onset of disorders. In other words, what factor exactly lead to the occurrence of disorders? This brings us to another crucial concept, the theory of the three causes of disease or disorders. This is the second key point I would like to share. So the systematic theory of the three causes disorder was first formulated by Chen Wuzhe during the Southern Song Dynasty after summarizing the Yellow Empress in the canon and the classical theories of previous scholars, he categorized the cause of disorder into three aspects, internal causes, external causes, and the causes neither internal nor external. Here are two specific classification methods for the three causes of disease. One is a narrow classification in regards to six exogenous pathogenic factors, or in other words, six external evils, which are feng or wind, han or cold, shu or summer heat, shi or damp or dampness, zao or dryness, fire or heat, as external causes. Some emotions in excess as uh, internal causes and the factors such as hunger, overwork, that's the wrong word, overwork, not overwork, overwork, force, physical injury, drowning, inside bite, as neither internal nor external causes. The other is the so-called more broad classification. We still consider six emotions in excess as the internal causes, while the six external evils, along with factors like uh, hunger, overwork, force, physical injury, drowning, and inside bite, are seen as external causes. Any disease caused by unidentified reasons is characterized as neither internal nor external causes. I personally favor the second interpretation. Next, so let's begin by examining this. For example, what specific factor are included in internal causes? So earlier we mentioned that extreme emotions are internal causes. But what are these seven emotions? In fact, there are several different interpretations of the seven uh, emotions. You might read some books to give, give you some different definition. In Confucianism, the seven emotions refers to joy, anger, sorrow, fear, love, hate, and desire. In the Buddhism, 
They refer to joy, anger, worry, fear, love, hatred, and desire. In traditional Chinese medicine, they refer to joy, anger, worry, contemplation, sadness, fear, and shock. So let's focus on the uh, seven emotions as mentioned in Chinese, uh, traditional Chinese medicine. As you can see from here. Joy, I tend to describe it as uh, overexcited, anger, okay, worry, and uh, contemplation, which I prefer overthinking, sadness, fear, and shock. So we've been talking about the yin yang, right? So which of these emotion issues belong to yin and which belong to yang? If we further classify them, use the five elements, what would happen? As you can see from here. So what is the correspondence between these emotion issues, yin and yang, and the organs in our body? So when, once we understand this, we can more accurately predict or judge based on the conditions of the disorder, which of these emotion issues we have a direct impact on our organ. So let's slow down a little bit. For instance, excessive fright and fear can impact kidney function. Excessive sadness and worry can affect disease related to lung or directly cause lung disorder or from here, large intestine issues. LI is a duration of large intestine, you can see from the under, under, underneath. So when your patient tells you they are easily frightened and often feel unexplainable fear, you can immediately diagnose that the patient is prone to kidney-related disorders or bladder conditions such as frequent urination or urinary urgency. From another perspective, being easily frightened or frequently experiencing fear may be an early sign of kidney or bladder disorder. So once we understand this, or understand this correlation, we have a clearer direction in treatment. We can work on strengthening kidney function, or if blood symptoms are present, address those first. When kidney function improves and the blood symptoms disappear, the patient's emotional issues of fear and anxiety will naturally be resolved as well. This is one of the fundamental approaches in traditional Chinese medicine diagnosis and treatment. In the future, we can look into detailed discussion on specific case. Now, what if the patient comes to you with the pain? For example, shoulder or back pain. You also notice that this patient has a, a very bad temper, easily gets angry and often complains. In such cases, while treating the pain, you should also try to regulate the patient's liver chi. If the patient also happened to have a liver condition, then restoring normal liver function will be the one of the, your top priority. Let's rephrase this scenario again. What can constitute external cause in this example? So what constitutes the external cause in this example? 
shoulder or back pain. And where do contribute like bad temper or quick anger fit in? They fall under the category of internal cause. So in case like this, we not only consider external factors, but also internal ones. Only by doing so, can we provide more comprehensive assistance to the patient for the quicker recovery and achieve the best clinical effect. Because internal and ex external factors can influence each other and that they are not isolated or mutually exclusive. That is also reflect the holistic view of traditional Chinese medicine. This is also a unique way of thinking in Chinese medicine. Instead of using a specific acupuncture method or particular uh, Chinese medicine herb to treat a specific disease, it's about considering the patient as a whole. If Chinese medicine were to embrace the logic approach of conventional medicine, focus on specific med medications for specific disease, it would have disappeared into the history long ago and been abandoned and forgotten, I believe. I'm very, I'm very sure. With no chance of existing for thousands of years. The fact that Chinese medicine has existed for thousands of years, persisting with this holistic approach, the unity of heaven and humanity, they must have its rationale. So, in clinic treatment, instead of uh, hastily diagnosing what disorder the patient has, we should first understand the overall yin yang balance. Is the patient coming in with a smile, with a fear in their heart, or full of worries? Or when the patient with back pain comes in, is their shoulder higher than the left or the right shoulder? The left shoulder, which left or right shoulder, which one's higher? So which side is yin and which is yang? And then we proceed with further inquiry and examination. So the first thing we need to do is not to rush into diagnosing patient. The most important thing is to establish a concept or correct concept of yin yang. We should cultivate the habit of observing things with the yin yang perspective, making it your sixth sense, your instincts, which is more important than any diagnosis. Regarding this, if we have the opportunity in the future, or we will teach you some method for training uh, in your daily life. This is something that each of us or any of us can fully achieve, there's no doubt about. So let's review and uh, summarize today's discussion. So through our understanding of yin yang, we know that the concept of yin and yang in traditional Chinese medicine originated from Asian astronomy and uh, the changes in climate, cholesterol movement, etc., which are crucial for understanding the onset and the treatment of human disorders. The proficiency in understanding and uh, assessing yin yang directly affect our comprehension of disorders and our treatment plan, greatly influencing the outcome of treatment, of course. Traditional uh, Chinese medicine's understanding of the cause of disorders primarily comes from three aspects, internal factors, 
external factors and the factors that are neither internal or external. In clinical practice, it is only through comprehensive analysis that we can grasp the true etiology. As long as our approach and our direction are correct, our treatment method will not be rigidly fixed. Okay, before we wrap it up, let's revisit uh, the relationship chart once more. This chart is crucial in light of today's discussion as it, it can greatly assist you in your clinical practice. However, you might be wondering, where does chart come from? You made it by yourself or from your imagination? Why does these elements have such relationship with each other? So what is the, the underlying logic behind it all? Before we finish, I'll quickly go through this. So this is all from the Huang Di Neijing or Yellow Empress book. Su Wen, let's go through just one. So the emperor asked, do the five organs correspond to the four seasons, each having its own receptions? Qi Bo replied, yes, the color associated with the east is green, okay. which correspond to the liver. Okay. Green, liver. It opens up to the eyes and the stores essence is the liver. When its disorder arises, one experience shock and then fright, it tastes is sour. So now you know the sour taste is belong to the liver or five element Y wood. So if somebody lack of wood or got liver deficiency, you can what you can recommend them. In a diet, sour taste food. Ah. E resemblance is to grass and trees. Its animal is rooster. Okay, another. So eat more chicken to help your liver deficiency. Grains, it's grains is wheat, wholemeal bread. And it corresponds to the four season. It corresponds to the start of the year, thus the chi of spring resides in the head. It sounds shouting. So when people like shouting, ah, oh, this kind of activity, you know, your chi, liver chi access. Its number is eight. Okay, when you choose your phone number, choose eight. Okay. So which indicates that disorder manifests in the pendants. So people's tendons got pain or, for instance, people all ask me about arthritis. Okay. So now you know which organ or which animal you can look into. So of course, this is just wood. And uh, next to fire, the same. Earth, metal, water. So they're all in the book. The Yellow Empress Classic of Medicine. So in the future, if you do have a chance to go further, do more like today, today's sharing, we can discuss more in detail about this. Okay, that's it, that's it for today. So if anybody, any of your friends have questions, you can ask you now. Let me let me see. We have 10 minutes to ask him questions. Any questions, Dave, you want to ask? Uh, I do. Yeah, okay. Um, a bit too I, fast, I'm trying to be slow, but uh, I'm not so sure. You can understand what I'm talking about here. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the only difficulty that I have is because often 
when I see pa patients, but as a Western doctor, mm. and sometimes I try, albeit with not much experience, to, to, to think, well, how would you diagnose this as a Chinese doctor? Mm. The difficulty that I have is that nothing seems pure at all. So you'll see some people, for example, mm. you know, they, they'll be in a job where they do overthink. Mm. Um, they do kind of like have fear and they do mm. have a lot of worry. Mm. So they have all these elements and then it's, it's how you actually focus on one specific area I and I, I imagine in some ways it, it's a little bit like the analogy of maybe kind of like growing a garden and you test this out in a certain area. So if you think that, I guess if somebody comes through and they've got problems with the tendon, I'd imagine that you might go more thinking that this is more to do with kind of like the liver and maybe kind of work on that area and see how that. Yes, I understand what you're thinking. It's not just you. So many, many people, even in the Chinese practi practitioners, they have all this thinking. Because this kind of thinking affected by the modern science. It's the so-called modern science thinking. When you see things, you're just trying to one by one thing. Okay, shark. I'm I'm not so sure whether I should give you this 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 chart. <laughs> it seems like they are. So when you see patients, we we should see that's what I'm talking about here. We should see the whole picture instead of the symptoms. Sometimes when people walk in my clinic, I don't even listen to the, the, their, their symptoms because they're going to write it down anyway. So I don't even listen to them. I observe them. I mm. see what's going on. I even look at, the, look at their shoes, look at their color of their, their clothing, and look at their hairstyle, look at their, how they talk. Mm. That's the thing I look first. I see the whole picture, how they walk into my clinic, how they sit down. So if it's a pain patient, and no immediate, okay, you sit down like this, you must have low back pain. Sometimes I say, oh, you have low back sciatic pain? Say, oh, yeah, sometimes you know. So well, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm a magician. Yeah. By observer, observation, you have to observe first. So forget, this is very, very difficult part. I know that's why today I spend so much time to trying to tell everybody before we do any diagnosis, before we focus on their symptoms, let's have a look, let's stay back. Take a look at the whole picture first. Mm. Sometimes we, we have to even have to check the weather. How about today's weather? Probably this is going to go a little bit too far. It's not difficult to understand, but that's the way, true way of thinking. You have to understand the whole thing, everything happened for a reason. There's always heard of this. Uh, people say, oh, everything happened for a reason. They come here to see you. There's some reason why they're here. Not the symptoms, just a trigger point. You have yeah. to follow just the bre breadcrumbs. You have to follow the breadcrumbs, find out the real reason. Do you remember the skin issues? The goy, is that, is that, I can't remember the name. The, the skin issues. Vertigo, vertigo issue then. So, it's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll just give you a sample. It's not the skin issues. It's the psychological issues. It's the life experience issues. Why solve that issues? The skin issues disappear. Mm. Yeah. If we I... just, just focus on the skin issues, it's very difficult. Sometimes, yeah, it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. We don't know the reason. Can I ask a question, please? Yeah, of course, can. Sorry, I don't want to unmute. Um, I, uh, I'm Jenna. Um, Jenna so I guess like what happened here is um, like Bing is trying to give us um, a overview of the yeah. fun, the the basic or the theory of Chinese medicine, mm -hmm. and then you kind of have to develop um your experience um by by seeing patient. But my question is, how long does it take to to <laughs> accumulate the experience? Because I think it's very difficult um to kind of tear things apart, like you say, you observe, you know, how they what they wear and um uh, how they speak and things. But I mean, it's an experience that comes with time. Is it something that you know we can get fairly soon, or um, does it take years? Okay, yes, that's a good question. So yes, people always think, okay, how long is it going to take? But for ages, I'm not going to learn anymore. <laughs> okay. 
there is the this is yeah, just like I said, it's a broad idea. It's the principle. It's the starting point. You have to have this in mind first. If you just if you don't have this in mind, you just go straight to the symptoms. You won't learn anything. Trust me, this is very very important. So how long? I talk about how long. There's a short. There's a sh uh, um, shortcut. There's a long way and the uh, and um, and the short way. So there's a method we can help you establish the thinking by like a probably case by case study. Okay, when you look at the case, what are you gonna think? What are you gonna think? Practice make pra uh, perfect. So how long depends on two things. One is how we teach. Secondly, how you gonna practice. It's two way things, it's not something, okay, there's a method. I can learn this. I can quickly go into become a traditional Chinese medicine uh, acupuncturist. There's no such a way, there's two ways. From what I can do, I can provide my experience. I, I can provide, uh, probably I would say the unique way, training way to help you to get into the door. And how far you can go really depends on you. For instance, you don't have a patient. Every day you still see one patient. Another student or a, a, a practitioner, they can see, he or she can see 10 patients in a day. So, you know, you, you, you tell me which one is quicker. You have to put in practice, what I'm trying to say is. Yeah, when you learn this skill, you have to do it. It's hands-on things. So it's not something you can be learned. Learn is give you a guidance. But you have to do it. The more you do, the quicker or the shorter time will take. Hopefully, give you some idea about how how it works. <laughs> I was on mute. Can on mute. No problem. No problem. Don't worry about that. Okay. Any other questions? But of course, if you do have any questions, you can um you can uh, join our WhatsApp group. So in the WhatsApp group. You can put on, let me show you the WhatsApp groups here. You can uh, join our WhatsApp group and um, put a question there. Once we, once I have time or once we, uh, there's a chance I can uh, like this. This is, this is our WhatsApp group, right? Yeah. And then we can discuss this in the group or in detail. But today we just roughly give you some idea before you study any traditional Chinese medicine. Don't go. Once again, don't go to the detail too soon. Please, if you really, David, and also I'm trying to say to you many, many times, before you go to the detail, really, this is very important, super important. I can see some uh, Chinese uh, uh, pra uh, practitioners in the in the meeting as well. So they probably, they, they know what I'm talking about uh, a little bit more. Because we've been, I've been repeating this many, many times. Don't go straight to the point too soon establish the matter first. So how you look things first, because if you just you look in the symptoms, people come in with the fear, with psychological issues, you just so focus on psychological issues. Sorry to, to say that you're, you're, you're going to be very difficult. So forget about this first. Yes, people come to you. Of course, in the future, we'll go, we, we've got the case. We can uh, talk about it a little bit more. How are we going to do that? Date of birth probably is the first thing you need to check. Because through the date of birth, you understand roughly this patient or the people's personality or any um, the chance of having any disorders and the other other things. So that's a practical way to help you. But I need you to have this concept in mind first. Otherwise, you wouldn't know, you won't understand what I how you do do this? Okay, check this person's uh, date of birth. You don't know what we're talking about. Or check the what's the when this disorder happens. Even what's the weather like by the time? Is there anybody around you or sort of things like that? Or if there are any life ex, uh, uh, ex, um, events? This this. Is sometimes it's the key point, just like I use the skin issues example, it's the key for understanding the whole issues. 
without this concept, you wouldn't think about that. You would say, okay, this is not irrelevant. You think it is irrelevant. Actually, there everything's related. So we have to have this understanding. Of course, sort out the pain is easy. People, uh, when you go into start practicing, uh, mostly like pain issues or keep people calm, we put the like global balance, people fall asleep. Right. Although you don't have to understand what's the what's the uh, 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 concept behind, but give you some confidence to carry on. But this is not enough. What I'm trying to say, this is not enough. I'm not so sure whether I should do this for you, but by doing this, it's trying to give you confidence to carry on. Uh, treat the uh, uh, the, uh, the patients uh, shoulder pain will tell you the floating technique. You can reduce the pain immediately, but that's not the Chinese acupuncture. It's just very, very tip of an iceberg. Without understanding what we're talking about today, it's very difficult. Your role is just, very difficult to carry on. It's very difficult to, to improve. It can still prove, but very difficult. That's what I'm trying to say. Any other questions? Our Chinese, uh, Ch Chinese uh, uh, practitioners in groups? You can see some. Okay, no question. The one. Hi, it's Kath. Can you hear me, Bing? Yeah, okay, of course, can Kath. No. Yeah, no, no, it's good. It, I can see why people. It's when to put into context, going to university to study acupuncture. It's just mind blowing. So yeah. it's a, and that's three years. But and it's not until you do the practical, um, clinical work is that it starts to come together. I don't know if that helps, Jenna, but um, it's um, yeah, it literally is. Time. I think it's what being saying. The more you do, the more you think about it. But it's very hard when you when you practice it. When you practice in, you do have to keep remembering the theory because it's very easy to forget. Yes, 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 yes. Because you can keep going over the similar, and you use the same points, and then you think, actually, hold on a minute, I need to think about this a bit deeper rather than just use the same points. Because if you get good results with certain points, your tendency is you want to just keep using them, and then it doesn't work on someone, and you think, oh, right, okay, I've got to, I've got to go back to the yin yang, um, and and think about the theory rather than just doing rolling out the same points. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's that's very useful. Uh, yes, yeah, that's important. How do you think the cat? I don't have my ask you. Do you think it's uh, I'm not so sure how they understand uh, uh, this, how they take uh, it, It's difficult to understand what they take. It's, what yeah, on. no, I mean, I think you've given a really good broad overview. It is, it, it's almost like you need to, uh, it's the context around it. Um, and, um, Probably, case, I, I think examples of um, yin yang like um, cold and hot, and you know, people that have got a fever and it's too much, you know, too, and, and anger is too much yang. And it's, it's, I think perhaps putting it into context might help a little bit more. But when I think, like David said, when you see somebody with multiple conditions, yeah. it's knowing how, how, which one do you treat first? And I think um, it's, you treat the one that if you think that you can can't you know it's it's knowing which one to treat first so if you think by by calming the liver would help the other symptoms so the anger is creating a lot of heat you know that the the emotion of anger is causing the heat that needs to be subdued in order for any other in, things to to calm um i don't know does that make sense david that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does, Kath, yeah. And, but would you just focus really on kind of like one kind of like meridian first? Or what yeah, you, I, you, thought, you, thought, you sort of do a little bit of everything, but you focus on if it was, if, if, it, if someone was really, really angry, you would do the liver first, but you would add some points in because you know that the other, um, you know, this, it, the other things are going to be affected because of the amount of heat in the body. So you would automatically just add some points in to, 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 um, to try and reduce and balance the, the other organs and to make it a better treatment, a whole treatment. Because if you just focus on one, um, 
and and that is the problem being is I think in practice I think I, I don't know I think Sarah's still on but you you've got a tendency to think you have to put lots and lots of needles in and sometimes <laughs> yeah. you know when you're on your own you think right okay and it, just to show that you're trying to do something and then you step back and think hold on a minute I've done how how is this all working together how are all you know you're doing liver points spleen points stomach points how is it are they can can they cancel out each other? And that's that you, you you sometimes you have to step back and go, you know what, you don't need so many needles, you just need um you just need a few. And the the clients feed back to you. I had one last night, um, and he said, Oh, I feel all tingly and and uh, light and airy. And it's almost and and it's like he, he got a really nice experience from it. So you you get the feedback from the clients. Yes, very good point. Let me add up a little bit of things because you just remind me something. I I think it's also quite important to say. Um, you know, we always have the habit to say like uh, for the first consultation or first treatment, we should understand the whole thing. But that's that's wrong. I would say. Yeah. So normally, I would sometimes I would spend the whole block booking to understand the whole the uh, the patient's um, true issues. So that's the, I don't know, from the academic or, or, or teaching or, or modern days, um, like a conventional medicine training, whatever. So we're always trying to, okay, the people saying, I need to make the diagnosis. I need to know what's going on and give the a treatment plan and I would need to see the result. No, this is not going to happen in the, if we're going to carry on, do something like a training sort of things. It's not going to happen in our training. But the first, Feel that's why, and uh, if you know, uh, uh careful you know, to, to all my patients, I would say you give three chance. Actually, three chance is not enough, but I would I would say practically I give three times chance for every patient, to the patient or to myself. Okay, three treatment you will see the improvement. If you can't see an improvement, go find somewhere else. Why I say three treatment? Because within this three treatment, I will find out what's going on. Instead of going keep walking in five minutes or, or half an hour, I make my decision. Okay, this is patient that got oh liver chi division or or a spring division. That's not enough because you can't see the picture in the van in the half an hour. And what I'm talk about the so called uh, put the points and the frustration frustration all the points. Okay, liver chief got issues, that got issues, this got issues. Put all the point. I don't know which is which is which. You should start from the very basic first. Sometimes I'll give you a tip, give you an idea. Sometimes, that's why I always say to um, um, patients as well, so well, we do global balance. So just like a, a sand or something, you're trying to smooth everything out. When you're trying to smooth everything out, and then you'll find some imbalance coming up. You find out oh, something stick out. Oh, this is the imbalance part. I'm going to focus on this. Without doing this global balance, you won't be able to, or you don't have the chance to understand where is the balance. So, when you're trying to imbalance, if there's part bouncing back, resistance, if there's a resistance, that's the problem. I'm not so sure you uh, uh, make it uh, uh, clear of what I'm saying. So if you don't understand anything, do the global balance. And the imbalance part will show themselves. And then you focus on the imbalance part. Instead of guessing, okay, could be this, could be that, by from the symptoms. Okay, the sim this, this patient got these symptoms, uh, frequent urine, it could be the kidney deficient. No, kidney deficient can cause urine issues. Liver issues can also cause Frequent urine. Stomach issues could also cause frequent urine. Uh, frequent urine. And let me tell you this. I don't want to confuse you. What I'm trying to say is frequent urine issue, the symptoms <coughs> is not very reliable. Sorry. Without understanding the true picture, all this diagnosis. It's 
not very reliable. Just like I said, like a cough, look here, <laughs> cough. You think it's a lung issues? Okay, lung division. No. Stomach can cause cough. Kidney can cause cough. Liver can cause cough. All the organs can cause coughing. So we're gonna say. So I don't want to go further because you will confuse you. So in general speaking, in practice, before you learn how to focus, how to find out everything, do global balance. The patient will tell you, or the patient's body, the patient's meridian will tell you. And the you, be patient, observe what's going on, what's happening. When you do this global balance, what's the response of this patient? They will tell you, and they observe. This is your job, the first three treatment job. Do the global balance, or at one or two, you're very certain this could be that reason, and observe. Instead of jumping to the conclusion, oh, this is kidney deficient. That's the blood issues. This is the mo this is the very how can I say the big problem of the new practitioner or junior practitioner. I had these issues too. I had issues in the, in the past. I don't want you guys to go the same rule as I I've been through. After all these years, I learned one thing: be patient. I don't make my conclusion too soon. When I see the patient. I don't give them diagnosis straight away. After a few treatments, just like I said, and then if I can find the true reason, I go for it. If I can't, practically, I say, sorry, I'm going to focus on the next patient. Practically, yeah, financially, correct. But of course, as a practitioner, you shouldn't do that. You should find the truth. That makes I'm not so sure what, whether whether you, you understand. What Sabine, will you do one teaching session on global balance? Because I think a lot of people won't be aware of it, and uh, I only know a little bit about it. Yes, people they for the first treatment for anything they wouldn't expect miracle happens, but of course it helps patients. Okay, I wouldn't. Well, I'm not doing magic show. You wouldn't expect like a miracle happens. They do. They most most of hundred percent, not hundred, but ninety percent of them understand what what you what you're doing. You be patient. You show you show the honesty. So I'm, I'm, I'm yes, I tell you what what I'm what I'm thinking about your issues, but this is not a like a hundred percent diagnosis. But we're gonna do our best to try to help you if the symptoms release or not. Oh yes, there's one thing. If you do a treatment, the symptoms getting worse or getting better. All the good sign. The only thing is, if it's nothing changed, probably it's not a very good sign. You need to try harder to find something. The direction, the direction probably is not very right. And today, why I, I mentioned the three causes of a uh, like um um a disease. Don't put everything on yourself. So when you treat patient, whether there's good result or the bad result, you only account. 30% the maximum. That makes sense. There's another 70% out of your control. So don't think it's okay because of me. Okay, I, I make the patients getting better. So all, I take all the credit. No, you only got 30%. There's another 70% out of your control. That makes sense. So if you can't have this kind of thinking in mind, you will be become calm. Karma, when you treat patient, you don't feel that frustrated. And Kath or, or Sarah, right? You wouldn't feel that, okay, the patients don't have any results. Okay, we can keep trying. Because there are three causes, internal, external, unexplained reason. If you treat patient properly, yeah, they can only, well, probably can only treat the, uh, one in third of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the cause. And another, to a third course, probably you can't haven't even touched. You're lucky to to have a good result. I'm telling myself, same. That's what you've seen. 
I'm killing page. I have a, a meal crap happen every day, but I don't say I don't take all the credit myself. Okay, because of me, I, I'm so good. No, I just did my job properly. So don't take that kind of things too serious. Okay, I I need to make make difference in the one treatment or two treatment. You make your life admirable. Take it easy. Stay back. Clear your mind, and then you can see things clearer. Otherwise, you get more confused. That's what I'm trying to say. So don't make your life easier. Don't come to see me because of stress. <laughs> okay, so you can you can help yourself first. Take it easy. Okay, don't blame yourself. Don't just do your job properly. Follow the procedure. Okay, check the yin yang. There's a lot of things to talk about the yin yang in the future. If you've got a chance to talk, really, this is just the starting point. But this stuff is very important. If you don't have this concept, we can't carry on. You waste your time, waste my time. Don't just go to the treatment straight away. Okay, I'm going to make a difference today. I'm going to make two in three months' time, like Jenny said. Okay, how long? You're not the first one, you're not the last one to ask the question. It's many, many people asking the same question. How long can I get there? How long is it going to take? You might take a, a lifetime or second life, third life. But get into the business, it's easy with the proper guidance. That's what I can say. I can make sure you get into the business. You have confidence to carry on. You do the global balance. I told you, you see the result. People got to show the pain. You follow the procedures, you will see the result. But that's not the end. You need to know why, and then you can have it your own way. Every practitioner is unique. You have the unique way to treat people, not my way. I can tell you my way, but in the three months, probably six months, if that's what that's the answer you want to <laughs> you want. But that's not yours. I, what I want to do is pass on this knowledge to everybody and everybody can be a truly acupuncturist or Chinese, traditional traditional uh, Chinese medicine practitioners. That's the goal. Okay, I mean, it's uh, Dave, how's it going then? These couple of days, are you practicing? Have you been practicing? Who, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been practicing acupuncture? Uh, only on one person, but not much. You, you can only practice so much on one person, I guess, can't you? So, uh... <laughs> okay. Good point. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you later, probably yeah. later. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is the... Let me, let, me, let me finish this recording first. Okay.